welcome back. As promised, a little update on my do-it-yourself Sea Perch RV called Touch Mahal. Three new things have come up. First of all, a new death gauge indicator, which is going to be the topic of this video. Then probably in the next video is going to be featured my new underwater camera, where you can see the housing here. And also my new 100 feet or 30 meters long tether, which is actually detachable now which makes it a lot easier to transport, let me tell you. So here, this is it. Took several trials and errors, and uh, I'm very, very happy that it finally, I finally got it to work. And here it is. This baby actually tells me how deep I am. So, first of all, before we get into the construction details, let's talk about the physics behind it, how this thing actually works. So you can feel free to copy this as much as you like. So as you can see here, the pressure gauge itself is sealed off completely airtight and thereby kept at atmospheric pressure. When the RV goes into the water here in the first picture, it's at constant uh, surface uh, pressure. So the water level inside the flooding chamber here is empty. In the second picture, we're already down a few meters and you can already tell that the water uh, is the wa water pressure is increasing and also the air pressure is increasing. Now, when we get to 10 meters or one bar or an extra atmosphere, the, uh, the air that we have inside the dome is already depressed by 50% because we have two atmospheres imposing onto uh, that little chamber. Now, ordinarily, at this point, the water would get into the nozzle of the uh, pressure indicator. But uh, since I have this little tube thing going on, I wanted to make sure that the uh, access to the uh, uh, pressure gauge is always kept dry. So when we go deeper, it won't get wet. So how do you get this thing pressure tight in order to work, as just discussed? Now, first, this is what it looks like when it comes from the company. This uh, visor here is already sealing it off fairly, you know, dry, but certainly not watertight and especially not pressure tight. So what you've got to, got to be do, doing is using a lot of hot glue. Now, a little bit of hot glue would make this thing probably watertight against splash water or whatever, but to get it really pressure tight, that, that's a whole different story. I mean, just look at how much was necessary to really lock this thing up and then also to uh, spread it around e evenly so that no, there are no leaks, no bubbles, no cracks or anything into it. So yeah, took a little bit of time in order to get it this, this way. Now up here, it's a little more complicated. Sealing off this little hole right here was not that, was not that difficult, but all these screws and cracks up here, that was a problem. Now on my very first attempt, I used basically a pressure chamber. This is completely sealed off by epoxy with an additional acrylic glass here. And the same thing back here. But as you can see here with these bubbles, I had a bit of a problem. Epoxy is very, very low in viscosity. And uh, what happened here, I never would have thought this would happen. First, I sealed off the uh, pressure indicator from the rest of the housing with simple candle wax. But for some reason, the epoxy actually made it through the candle wax into the gears of the indicator, thereby completely destroying it. Oh, even though this still looks pretty uh, <laughs> sealed off by, the, by the, uh, the candle wax, it just stepped through. And so I got these bubbles and you can sort of see it down here where all these uh, little um, reflections are over here. That's uh, where it came through and also a little bit in the gears, obviously. And so this is un unfortunately did not survive this attempt. So on the second attempt here, or third attempt, basically, first I got a little bit of a plastic ring from a previous housing of uh, like this one, and then made sort of a belt around it and then sealed it off with hot glue. Then I used uh, the shield of, uh, this pressure indicator, which fortunately I had disassembled earlier before putting it into this housing here, and use that as a seal on this one. But before putting it on there, I first uh, sealed everything with hot glue from all these cracks, and then just to make sure that I get absolutely everything completely pressure tied, 
I uh, filled up the rest with uh, epoxy and then flipped the whole thing over. This way, uh, I wanted to make sure that absolutely nothing can seep through into the mechanics of the indicator. Now, and finally, it's still a little bit wet from, from yesterday's uh, day out in the field. Since I didn't want to get water in here, I used this uh, little L-shaped uh, tube system here. Now, this is... Uh, this is the, basically this is of the upright position. The water level rises as we just saw in the little uh, discussion there. The water gets in here, displaces the, uh, the the air. The air gets compressed, and everything stays dry. And also to make it a little more fun, I put a couple of fishing bolts, uh, buoyancy bolts in here, <laughs> just so that even with your bare eye you can see the water level rising. But uh, uh, that's just a little thing that I wanted to add. Just in case you're wondering, where did I get the dome? This is it. It was just, uh, it's, it's a casing of a deodorant. Which you can get at any drugstore, basically. This is the deodorant, and this is the casing. And I always thought, man, this looks kind of cool. Kind of like a little submarine thing going on. And so, from the previous one, I just cut off the top. And, yeah. This is no special item, nothing, you know, that you get from, your, from I don't know, submarineware.com or whatever. Nope, this is just, oh, basically it's garbage. <laughs> because at some point I'm going to be disposing of this. So that's just an example of if you put your mind to it, you can find extremely well and uh, fitting objects around your house, which you can use to, you know, do something extraordinary with. Yeah, and that's really all you got to do. Now this this is probably an example of trying to over engineer something. I mean, this is so massive. You could probably uh, uh, <laughs> get this into a water depth of 100 meters or so, but uh, that's a little too much. So I wanted to have a much more slender option, and so yeah, basically mostly just hot glue, a little bit of epoxy, and that was basically it, and it works per just perfectly. So how did I attach it to the ROE? Let's take a look at that. Well, that part is pretty simple. You just drill a hole into the frame of the ROV, like so, and then get a pipe clamp like this and get an adequate stainless steel screw with a nut. Now, all the uh, contact parts, you should probably uh, use rubber washers once again to get a certain flexibility without putting too much tension on the frame. And that is it, giving you something like this. enough talk <laughs> sorry about that let's put this baby into action one more time now what you see here in the main frame is the uh, live feed from the underwater camera the EOYO 30 meter version and in the bottom right hand corner is what you see with the action cam that you can brings to the surface later on. Pretty sweet, I mean, on the surface you have the uh, monitor, uh, sometimes there's an issue with reflections from sunlight and daylight, but let's take a look at how the depth gauge indicator actually works. This is about 20 times speed, look at that, 5 meters, close enough to 6, 4, 3, Four. Of course, I zoomed into the image here. I mean, <laughs> you see more of the surrounding when you have it on your screen. Also, if you're wondering what it looks like for uh, when the uh, air dome actually gets flooded. You can sort of make it out here on the side. See the water level going up and down. There you can also see some of the floating flotation bolts in the corner. So, so far so good. That's going to be all for today. As I said, next time is going to be about the tether. 
You probably did see a few minutes earlier that the new tether has absolutely no floaties attached to it, even though it's completely positively buoyant. So this tether, even though it's 30 meters long, is like a slippery snake in the water. How did I did that? More on that next time. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.